1240news.com. The show will be archived on rowlauctions.com as they are the host of this program. Additionally, this show will be posted on youtube.com. We're going to be talking about real estate auctions, past auctions, upcoming auctions, different real estate markets across the country. We've got a lot of topics today. Okay, we've got a call. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, Doug. Mark Manley, Rival Auctions. Well, how Mark, are how are you doing, sir? Thank you Man, so I much. I am great. I am great. Thank Just you. had a busy week in the auction business this week. Well, tell me what you've been doing. But it is it is wild. We are... Um, seems that bankruptcies have really taken off this year, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I, I don't know if it's the encouragement of the new year, but banks are looking to turn properties loose, so I have literally been out this week visiting with clients and, and inspecting properties for banks all week. Well, it, it seems like uh, Rowell Auctions, and again, that's my firm too, and, and you have been there for many, many years and, and are a noted uh, expert in your field. There seems like the banks are really turning the corner and saying, we need to sell these assets. And that has not been the case in the last few years. Agreed? Uh, absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing now is that banks are looking at their holding costs, uh, particularly on their lower-end assets, mm-hmm. and saying, you know, we are we are literally losing money if we don't sell these in the short time frame. And, and you guys just had, Rowell Auctions just had a, a big auction in December, I believe. Uh, we did. 200, 250 properties. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I, I can. That actually was a four-state auction uh, for a, um, a regional client. Mm-hmm. And exactly what we're talking about here, that client went in and identified um, a pool of assets that were taxing their management strategy. Um they manage everything in house, right? And it and it literally was just bogging down their management team, their REO management team, to the extent that they couldn't focus on on the bigger assets. What well, what is REO just for our listeners and uh, the general public? REO is a term used by banks, and it stands for real estate owned. Okay, it is, it is the property that they have foreclosed. Very good. Well, um, that apparently was a huge success because I saw a letter of reference from the bank. Uh, why do you think that auction was a big success? Multiple reasons. Um, a, a lot of these properties had not been fully marketed. You know, once again, they were lower in assets, and, mm-hmm. and some of them may have actually slipped through the crack where they weren't being marketed. Um, we're finding that a, a lot of times. Um, it is hard to represent the lower end assets. You know, the real estate agents don't really want to do them because there's not a there's not a good commission structure there to be made. Not a so, payday, right? Right, and and you know, it's just it, it takes more of their time to to earn a fifty or hundred dollar commission than than what it's worth. They can focus on bigger assets as well. So it's not just the banks, but it's also the realtors. Um, and auctioneers, to, to a certain extent, that are saying, you know, let's let's move these properties onto the side so that we can deal with the better stuff. And a lot of times on these these assets that we're talking about, there's next door neighbors. Uh, there's there's you know developers that will buy uh, the uh, orphan subdivision lots. And by orphan subdivision lots, the onesies and twosies that are left in subdivisions is Got what it. I'm speaking of. Got it. Um, there's people that are buy them if they know they're on the market. Right. And a lot of times they don't know it's, it's on the market. You know, I was uh, uh, in my 25-year career in real estate. At, at one time I was uh, an office uh, a person, a regular real estate, a district uh, sales manager for 60 uh, agents in, um, in Boynton Beach, Florida. And... People uh, and my agents would be working, and I'd see that they were working on, you know, hundred thousand dollar properties and a hundred and fifty thousand dollar properties. 
and to get back to your point, it takes the same amount of time and energy to do a lower end property compared to a four hundred thousand dollar house or a five hundred thousand dollar house. So I can see why these real estate agents um, sometimes don't want to mess with the small stuff. You're right; it does. Um, but Doug, I personally take a little different approach to that. Okay. Um, in, in doing a lot of bankruptcy work like I do and like you have done over the years, yep. uh, you come to realize that sometimes, um, in fact, most times, when you'll assist the client with the lower-end asset, helping him reach a solution for liquidating that, he is much more willing to allow you to handle the liquidation strategy for the larger asset. Good point. Um, Good point. And, and I have been successful, like you said, over my 20-plus year career, of, of spending a lot of time um, attending to the small detail, and by small detail, it's sometimes a small asset, to make it successful. Um, you know, I, I hate to use the term, but sometimes one man's junk's another man's treasure. <laughs> and, and, you know, like I said, a lot of times these lots will sell to adjacent neighbors or these properties will sell to adjacent neighbors that simply don't know how to buy them. Um, you know, a lot of these banks... It's very difficult to get to the right person to buy an asset. Um, prime example, I had a buyer from Texas call me yesterday uh, because he knows that I do business with a certain client, and he knows that this client owns a piece of beachfront property, but he cannot find anyone in the institution to tell him anything about it. Yep. They just keep shuffling him from department to department. Yep. And um, so he's called me, um, like I said, because he knows that I represent him, hoping that I can jump two or three levels up to find out who it is that we, he needs to talk to. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's the, the banks, the REO, the lenders, they're, they are swamped. And it's, it's kind of like the old days uh, in our last downturn when uh, you would go into a bank's um, – a place and, and to just be boxes and boxes of files that they haven't got to and they didn't have the staff to to take care of and it was impossible and that's why you know auctions really helped uh, sell the the properties that that needed to be sold and just to your point um, you know freed up their time because it takes as much time to deal with a small asset as a, as a big asset in, in many right. in many cases. You know, I read that letter of reference from the bank uh, in in December, and it also said that absolute auctions really made the the difference in the approach. What is an absolute auctions, and and give me your feel on that. Doug, an absolute auction is an auction where the property, the the ownership, the title of the property will transfer. Uh, there are no minimum bids uh, required. There are no minimum sale prices required. Properties sell for what the high bid price is. And in the market that we're in, it takes an absolute auction to attract the buyers to the, uh, to the actual assets mm -hmm. that are for sale. Mm -hmm. um, you can liken it to going to the supermarket, you know, products in the supermarket, vendors in supermarkets jockey all the time for space location okay. so that they are that they are promoting their item in the best possible means. And an absolute auction in the auction industry does the exact same thing. It lets the buyers know that that property will sell, that they're not wasting their time, because quite frankly, too many buyers have wasted their time in this market of trying to negotiate with sellers that were unreasonable. And right now, you know, there, there's there's a lot of reserve auctions going on, and reserve is when the seller has the ability to say no, right. that I won't take that, or to negotiate the sale. Right. There's a lot of reserve auctions going on, but the ones that are really attracting the attention are the absolutes. And those are the ones that are they're doing well as far as bringing more bidders and helps the sellers, helps the bidders. Uh, helps the auction firm. It's a win-win everywhere. There, there, isn't there another auction coming up for a, a bank uh, that uh, Ryle Auctions is doing? 
A, a there big, is. A big... uh, there's there's a large regional auction uh, that'll be Georgia, Florida, Alabama that is coming up in uh, early March. I believe March 6 is the end date. Okay. Those properties are being uploaded to our website now, and um, I think there's 260 plus or minus of those assets. So that's going to be a big event for us. Well, that's great. How do people find out about these auctions, Mark? Doug, it's real simple. Uh, go to the website, www.rywellauctions, R-O-W-E-L-L, auctions, with an S, dot com. Or if they'd like more specific information mailed to them or to speak to an agent that's handling a particular asset, they could always call on our 800 number at 800-323-8388. Give us that 800 number one more time. It's 800 800- Three two three, eight three eight eight. Very very good. I, I, again, we're you've been in the business for a long time and and uh, are a seasoned professional and an expert in your profession. Why do you think that uh, bankruptcies are getting more and more prevalent now, as far as uh, selling real estate? Doug, it's um. I have an opinion on this, <laughs> and and I will share it with you because, okay. as you know, I've, I've never been really one to not share my opinion I, when I have one. I hear you. I hear you. Um, we are seeing a shift in the economy. Okay. And, unfortunately, it's not necessarily what's being portrayed in the media. Okay. Um, when the financial downtime, downturn, the real estate crisis first hit, we saw a lot of people – that were highly leveraged, blue-collar workers, um, losing properties, going into uh, either Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and a Chapter 7 is a total liquidation, yeah. or a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, which is a, a reorganization. It's a wage earner re- reorganization. Okay. We have moved through that um, vein of debtors, so to speak, mm-hmm. and now what we're seeing What I'm seeing through my bankruptcy work is a higher income professional. Those that may not have been overly leveraged at one point, say when the real estate market started turning down, but as it's continued to fall, those high income earners have all of a sudden become tremendously over leveraged. Got it. And they literally cannot service their debt anymore. Some of them are being downsized out of their jobs because being high income, they're sometimes the first to be cut. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's really just been an eye opener. It's been literally people that you look up that were the prominent citizens of all of our communities that are all of a sudden having to file bankruptcy. They're losing their homes, they're losing their businesses. And those properties are some of the more premier properties. So they are attracting more attention when they're sold through the bankruptcy process than the lower end ones, the lower end ones done. And I really predict that this is going to be the next wave of the foreclosure. It's going to be the higher end assets and and the, and the, the more lucrative uh, or the more high profile businesses. Well, speak to me for a moment how important it is to sell quickly. What are the holding costs, and what is the deterioration of value when you don't uh, have a property that is bang- being maintained and lived in or, or being used as a business? Well, your holding costs are going to involve such things as your taxes, your insurance, um, your HOA fees, or your, your um, association fees if it was a condominium, a business condominium, or or shopping center type property, uh, those are all going to add to the holding cost. But one of the greatest unknown holding cost is the lost opportunity cost for a for a property sitting there, for a valuable asset sitting there. That that money is placed against that, whether it be in reserves with a lending institution or whether it just simply be held in inventory. That that bank or that institution is not able to use those funds. And what we're seeing is when those properties aren't sold quickly, holding costs are eating into the value. Um, But 
one of the greater problems is is deterioration of the property. We have literally been exposed recently to properties that had been through foreclosure, um, had been in inventories that were still being rented. They had tenants still in place. Um, the banks were not aware of this. Some of the rulings as far as evicting tenants takes a very long time. And a lot of times when people leave the properties, they don't leave them in the best condition. You know, we're, we're moving through a winter cycle now that if properties haven't been winterized correctly, there can be, be pipes freezing and, and busting and properties flooded. Um, visit a property recently, there had been a sewer back up in. No one had been in this property for months and there had been a sewer back up in, so you can imagine the mess that was there. But these are all things that diminish values of properties. Um, one of the, the other great unknowns is the amount of shadow inventory that's being held. And by shadow inventory, that is properties that are not even on the market now. That may be held through some of the, as you said, government entities that will be coming on the market at some point in the future. Shadow inventory is going to be huge. Um, we are literally meeting with clients every day that are, are concerned about properties that are not on the market that are being held back whether that be through government agencies, the FDIC, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. that when those properties begin to come onto the market, they're going to further diminish price. Um, had an incident recently where we went into a bank to look at a number of subdivision lots for sale. And when we did our research in the particular area where these lots were in, the numbers of available properties was absolutely staggering. Um, it, it, it really made the difference for that client, it caused them to open their eyes and say, if I don't sell quickly, I may not have an opportunity to sell. And even if I do sell quickly, the value may be declining at such a rate that we can't get a real good handle on what these properties are going to be worth until after they're on the market and sold. Um, it's going to be big. Well. Listen, Mark, I thank you so much for calling in. Um, tell us right again, what is the website and the 800 number for Ryle Auctions to talk about all of these auctions you've got going and Ryle Auctions have got going? The 800 number would be 1-800-323-8388. That's 800-323-8388. And Rowell's website is www.rowell, R-O-W-E-L-L, auctions.com. That's Rowell Auctions with an S dot com. Mark, thanks so much for calling in on a Friday. Thank you, Doug. Take bye -bye. care now. Bye bye.